Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is on his way to Japan now to attend meetings with the leaders of the G7 in Hiroshima. Joining us live, the Sky News US contributor Michael Ware, a friend of first edition. Michael Ware, I, uh, I should add. Michael, good to see you. So these G7s, these, these, these summits, they're often just talk fests and not much really happens. But this one's interesting because, I mean, not only is it the, the world's most powerful nations here, but it's in Japan. Japan and China have, have got problems at the moment. So, so what can be different about this one this time around? Well, obviously, what's going to be very different is Russia. That's going to be very much at the forefront of this G7. The G7 is the collection of the largest economies on the planet. And let's not forget, Russia was excluded some years ago. Yeah. So, look, I, I, let's not forget, yeah, this is a talk fest, but you've got to understand everything that goes on leading up to these talk fests. Most of the hard yakka is already accomplished by bureaucrats or defence strategists or by policy experts before the leaders actually have to sit down and, and finally thrash things out. So, look, we can see all sorts of things coming out of this, but obviously consolidating united opposition to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, China is very much going to be on top of the agenda, as will a host of, of other issues. And all of this with the American debt ceiling crisis looming over it because, you know, whilst everyone, I think, in their heart believes the debt ceiling crisis will be resolved, if it's not, it's going to affect these seven nations and every other nation enormously. So that will be hanging over this particular meeting in Hiroshima. That's a good point. Does Biden get it done? Well, we will see. I mean, the Republicans say that they're going to get it done. Um, the White House says they're going to get it done. The negotiations are continuing. In fact, they've stepped up the negotiations. Each side um, now has more senior staff involved. So, you know, look, it, 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 this is a game of bluff. Um, who can push who to the brink? And... You know, it, it's about big government versus small government. It's about, you know, tax cuts for the rich under one administration and spending by another administration. Bottom line, America really can't afford to default. And I don't think either party really wants that. What's yeah. really happening here is that the Speaker of the House, the Republican, Kevin McCarthy, if you remember, went through torturous 15 ballots amongst his own party to, you know, attain the speakership. He's being held hostage by a very fanatical fringe. And they're the ones who I think will be making these negotiations the most difficult. Well, I mean, we've been here before. You know, we spoke about this on Tuesday, Michael, when Biden um, abandoned his trip to Australia. But, I mean, they've raised the debt ceiling so many times. What's re really, what's the likelihood of it not happening? I mean, it's going to happen isn't it? Look, I'd like to think in my gut that, yes, the, 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 we will reach an agreement. America can't afford not to. I mean, come June, 4th, the, June 1st, according to the Treasury Secretary, you know, America starts having trouble paying Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid and the Defence Force. No one's really in a position to allow that to happen, not to mention the reverberations around the planet. I mean, economically, the entire planet looks to America to be the core of stability and the centre of gravity. So I'm not sure that this is a time that America should be jeopardising that, even though they are. Let's just hope this is yet again a case of mere political brinkmanship yeah. because, as we said the other day, you know, the debt ceiling's been raised 78 times. Often it's without contest. It's just that Kevin McCarthy, the Republican leader, mm. you know, as part of his deal to become Speaker, had to make these concessions to these, these, these fanatical uh, right-wing members of the party to try and curb Biden's spending and basically make President Biden's life hell. OK. Michael, we'll leave it there. Talk to you soon.
Thanks, Brian.